what it is, what's happening. We're inside the headquarters of the ranch today, and um, we're going to talk about some uh, twin I-beam stuff that I got uh, finally going to get around to doing too. If you watch my videos, you see the green F-150 that's in the background. It's been on the second lift for a couple of years now. It's been sitting there. So it's time to get this front suspension together, get this thing on the ground, and get it off the lift so I can use the lift for other projects, and get this truck back to rolling. So one of the reasons I hadn't really worked on it in a while is I want to keep the truck twin ivy. Now, a lot of guys are like, oh, you're crazy. I'd solid axle swap. Well, there's a reason why I want to keep a 150, and I want to keep a twin ivy. Twin I-beam trucks, when they're set up correctly, they drive great and they ride really well. I have, if you've watched my channel, you've seen the 96 Bronco that I put together. We've been using that truck all summer, every weekend out on the beach since the beginning of summer. And we have had no problem. The only thing wrong with that Bronco is the gas gauge stopped working. Thanks to uh, a Chinese um, fuel sending unit that was supposed to be a motorsports one, but it was garbage. That's the only thing wrong with that truck. That thing rides great. Four-wheel drive works great. It's push-button four-wheel drive. We do have to get out and lock the hubs because I didn't want automatic hubs. But that truck, it drives phenomenal. And there's some times where the beach is really, really rutted up, and that thing just floats across. It doesn't beat you up at all. So on this F-150, I've been wanting to do something I've never done before uh, in all the years even when I own my four-wheel drive shop, I've never done. I've always wanted to try on one of these trucks. And it's called a Uniball. And what this does is a lot of guys out west that are jumping these things in the sand and building pre-runners run these. Now, I'm running them for a little bit different of a reason. And where this is going to go is right here where your twin I-beam pivots. That pivot bushing. That pivot bushing is a problem on these trucks. And, you know, that's where this whole entire assembly pivots now a lot of guys complain they don't like the twin i-beam trucks or they're, they're junk and oh they're, they're garbage they wear tires and you back up the parking space and the wheel it's because you're because you guys aren't setting these up right you got worn out parts you got beat ball joints you got worn out shock towers there's a lot of things going on that calls that most of it's just worn out parts and guys that don't know how to do an alignment on these things correctly. Now, I've got an alignment guy. I could probably do it in-house, but it's just easier to take it over to him. And he gets everything put on there, you know, gets everything on the machine and gets it set up right. Another thing you can do with these trucks, too, is, which I've done before in the past, and it really makes a big difference, especially if they got a little lift on them, because these twin I-beam trucks are funky. This is for the passenger side. The tie rod comes up in, from the bottom. Now, what happens is, because it's lifted, your steering geometry is on an angle. Even with a drop pitman arm, it still doesn't really correct this crazy angle that you get on the tie rods. So what we do is we drill the top out, put an insert in, put the tie rod in from the top. That helps correct the geometry of the steering, and it makes these things steer a whole lot better. Now, I am running a redhead top steering box which helps a lot also you still run the drop pitman arm but you bring the tie right in from the top instead of the bottom that's going to help a lot now i've had a lot of these trucks where i've replaced these bushings in the twin i beams and they're good and then about six to eight months later of, of actually using the truck as a truck i've had the bushings go bad and knock the alignment out so i'm going to give this whole kit a try now this kit's not cheap this is 300 bucks to spend but this being it's a uniball, as they call it, it's, it's a bearing. I've got to hole saw the old bushing out. This cup gets welded in. Then the, it fits in there a little tight, but then the uniball goes in. And they give you a couple stiffener plates to weld up. But this being as tight as it is, this will allow for nothing, to, nothing else to move. So I've never done this before. Uh, on one of these trucks, but I want to try because I want to try to make this thing as tight as I possibly can. And I think by getting rid of the rubber bushing and going with this uniball setup, I think we're going to um, achieve that. And not only that, the whole thing will go, the whole front twin I beam will be on this ball instead of a bushing. And you know, once you tighten the bushing down, it's really technically only supposed to move so much. But with the uniball, this thing's going to move freely. 
know, 365 degrees if you wanted to, but you know, this will allow to uh, move a little freer and get this front end a little, a little uh, more, um, I guess tightened up or whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to give this a try. I was, I had been thinking about this for a long time and uh, I kind of always was curious, but the price of it, like I said, is it's not cheap. And I kind of was like, ah, eh, well, this is just a $500 truck. We'll just let it go. But I've got a little more money than 500 bucks in this truck. So I wanted to give it a try and see if it really does. So until we get this whole thing back together and lined up, um, I really won't be able to tell you a whole bunch of how it's going to perform just yet. But in my head, this being a bearing and not a rubber bushing, I think this will really tighten the front end up a lot more. This truck's going to be running a 35, 12, 50, 15 inch tire. So it's going to be running a good size tire. Uh, it's a 351 5.8 truck. Right now, it's got 350 gears. Uh, I'm going back and forth in my head if I want to change a gear set out because I have a set of 410s here at the shop. So I'm thinking I might put a set of 410s in it. I'm not 100% sure. Um, right at this point, I just want to get the thing back together. This truck's been apart for four years. So I will do a video. Uh, I got to buy something else that I haven't bought yet. They sell a brass slug that you need to put inside of here. So that when you weld this, um, the brass bushing helps absorb some of the heat and doesn't distort this so that this will, because this is a pretty tight fit, so that this will fit back in the side here. So I've got to buy that. I haven't bought that brass slug yet. Um, I bought this whole kit from, uh, hmm, is that in California? Um, so anyway, um, so all these parts, I want to talk about the next thing I wanted to talk about was, um, I want to give a little shout out, a little plug to, uh, Master Coat Paint. Um, now, I did a TikTok video on this paint, and the, and the video blew up, and uh, the guy's been selling paint like crazy. So I wanted to talk about that paint. All these parts for this front end have been sandblasted. I had everything sandblasted because I'm on the East Coast, so stuff is rusty. There's just nothing we can do about it. Um, all my steering knuckles, if you can see, you can see it's got some rust pitting. All these knuckles have been sandblasted. Now, I do got a, I do got a reclean out in here as you can see there's some paint here um this here is where the abs sensor would go we're not going to run abs on this truck the abs system is all coming off of the truck uh, i will be deleting that off the truck and a lot of guys have asked me why do i delete the abs system because uh, i deleted on the uh, 96 bronco the one that i've called bronco cheap cheapskate which is videos back on my channel if you look here's the reason why <clears throat> i've been in the full drive world my whole life uh, I've been four wheeling. Um, there's a truck right outside the door here that's on 44s. Um, I've got some big stuff. I got some small stuff. I spent a lot of time in the woods on hills that are, you know, when I say a hill's greasy, that means the mud's slippery and there's leaves. It's really slippery. So if you're coming down a, if you're messing around in the woods, just playing, having a good time, you're coming down a hill, I want the brakes to lock up, not the ABS to come and come in effect. Another thing a lot of guys don't think about is <clears throat> disable the airbag. Airbags disabled in the Bronco. And this is simple. Just unplug a couple of crash sensors. Uh, the ABS won't, or I'm, I'm sorry, the airbag won't work. <clears throat> we were out in the woods one year. Guy was out there in, a, I want to say, a 2000-ish, early 2000s Chevy truck. And he was crossing what we called this little ravine. And all it was was a little washout area where the water runs. Uh, property that we four-wheel, the water runs off of the main highway and runs through this property. And we call it a ravine. It's just a little washout area where the water runs. And he was crossing it. And the, the ravine's about the length of a truck if you're crossing it sideways. He went down and he hit the other side. He hit it hard enough that it set the airbag off. And it popped him right in the face. Well, <clears throat> airbag needs to see three things. Vehicle speed, ignition on, point of impact. He had all three. So the bag popped him in the face. So... I always tell guys, if you're building something with a four-wheel, get rid of that. Disable it somehow because you don't want it going off in your face. Same thing with the ABS. I want to be able to lock the brakes up, hold myself on a hill if it starts to slide, not have the ABS activate and help me down the hill. I may not want to go down the hill. I may be going towards a tree. I want to lock the brakes up. I, that, I want the old school, lock them up, 
brake feel. So this truck, same deal. Um, the Bronco, Bronco Cheapskate, deleted the ABS off of that truck as well. Uh, I've done it on quite a few of them. Some guys are like, oh, you're crazy. Some guys are like, oh, good idea. It's preference. I'm kind of building these trucks as old school. That's how I want them. I want them to, you know, run like an old school truck. Now, back to um, the paint that I used. I don't like Pour 15. Um, I, my, my personal opinion and professional automotive opinion, Pour 15 is garbage. You're wasting your money. Here's why. Pour 15 does not have any UV protection. So if you put Pour V on... Pour V. Pour 15 on a rusty metal. If it's underside and out of sunlight, it'll work. But it still needs a top coat. This stuff right here, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. Master coat does not need a top coat. You can put this stuff on and you don't need a top coat. This has UV protection. Now, <clears throat> this company's been around for a very, very long time. Um, this is one of the best products. Now, there's some other products out on the market. I've heard guys talk about Rust Bullet, blah, 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 blah. And I've used them, but I always go back to this product. Um, they're silver, which this is what this is, the silver. The silver is the best product to use on rusty metal. Uh, most of the time I put two coats on. A lot of times I brush it on and I don't spray it. Um, and here's why. When you brush it on, you can put it straight out of the can. You're not thinning it. You're not, this, this product's pretty thick on its own. But if you brush it on, you can kind of put it on a little heavy on your rusty pitted metal. Another thing too is now all these parts here have been sandblasted. These have all been sandblasted and they came back pretty much how it looks now. And I put the silver, two coats of that stuff right on top of it. Um, now they, they recommend um, you can wire brush it clean it with a, 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 an acid and let it dry and then top coat it. I have done, I've used a silver, I should say, with like minimal to no prep, just kind of like haphazardly wire brush it, blew it off with air and put two coats on and I've had the stuff last. I've gone like I did with this stuff, sandblasted, did all the proper steps, two coats, and I've had it last just as long. Now this stuff was so scaly and nasty um, I had it all sandblasted so I could really see what I was working with because one knuckle I actually put in the trash because it was so pitted and I got another knuckle off of another truck because it was just one was just really, really pitted. Um, the actual beams were really in good shape. The beams didn't have a whole lot of rust and they're, they're prone to really rusting on the inside. As you can see here, these beams are actually in really good shape. They have a little, uh, the pasture side has a little bit of pitting, but I'm not really too worried about it. It's got two coats of silvers on it. Uh, I am going to use, they sell another product. I'm going to use their um, Satin Black. It's a two, it's actually a three-part. You got your hardener, you got your paint, and you got your reducer so you can spray it. Uh, I'm going to use this product, their um, Satin Black. I'm going to use it on the beams and a, a radiator support I got over here. I got to do a radiator support for another car. Uh, and I'm going to use it on here because I've never actually used any of their other products. I've just been a big fan of their silver for so many years. A few things you want to know about this product. This product's about 50 I think it's like right now, I just bought a couple more cans. I want to say it's like $58 a can. It's a quart. Uh, it's quite expensive for what you, know, for what you get. I'm, I shouldn't say for what you get because you get a lot with this. This paint is phenomenal. Um... It's a little more pricier than some other products. Make sure it's still good. Um, but it's really worth it. I have done, um, I should probably take you to the other side of the shop and show you a pickup truck bed that I that I just wire brushed. And um, kind of just, no prep really, I should say. I mean, it was terrible prep job. It was basically what I had was I had a little left in the can and I didn't want to throw it away. And there were some rusty spots in the bed of my 66 Ford pickup. And I took a wire brush and just knocked all the loose shit off, took an air nozzle, blew it off, and used the rest of this, this product and just brushed it on the rusty spots on the floor of the bed. That was about eight years ago. And that truck, up until a couple of years ago, that truck sat outside a lot. No prep, no grind and rust away, nothing. The rust hasn't bled through the silver. It's still silver. 
you could take some other paint and just brush it on a rough spot. And I guarantee you six months to a year, you'll see the rust bleeding back through the paint. This stuff held it down. I've used this stuff. I use this stuff a lot of times when I fix like a floorboard in a truck. Um, I own a bunch of tow trucks. At one point I owned a towing business. So I had 14 trucks on the road. We're on the East Coast. So we see rain, mud, snow, salt. We see all the, all the, they put brine down on the road. I mean, it's horrible around here. It's hard to keep anything nice. But I owned a fleet of tow trucks. And um, I use this stuff on the floors of the trucks because guys are getting in and out of them in the wintertime. You can't help it. The floors are getting wet. So in the summertime, I, on, on a couple of the really nice trucks, we pulled the seats and the carpets and stuff out. And the floors were all nasty. Cleaned all the floors, wire brushed them, wire wheeled them. And I uh, put two coats of this stuff on, put the put the carpets and everything back in up until the day I sold those trucks and floors never got any worse than what they already were. Which when I say they were rust were bad, they weren't bad. They just, the paint was coming off and they were starting to rust. This stuff stopped it. So they didn't rust any further than what they already were. Uh, I've used this stuff on the bottom of radiator supports before I put a radiator sport in the truck. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, we're trying to save this junk and keep it on the road as long as we can. I use it. Any, any kind of metal um, that I'm patching or fixing or, you know, I'll use that stuff to uh, stop. Now, there is something neat that I want to share. My 66 F250, above the back of the window, there's a seam in the cab. And the seam was leaking one day because it was raining. It was raining out and the seam was rusty. I pulled the headliner down and I found a mouse nest in it. Well, the mouse nest had gotten the seam of the roof rusty. Wire brushed it, blew it off, put two coats of that on, no more water leak. So it sealed the water leak up and stopped the rust. And it's been that way for years. I have no more water leak at the seam. It's where the roof and the back of the cab are together. No more water leak. The water leak stopped. This stuff sealed it up. He does say you can use this um, inside gas tanks. A couple things about this product. You do not want to take and pour some out into another container. You can do that, but do not... What you, so let's say you have a little cup and you just want to pour some in a little cup because you're doing underneath of something. Oh, well, I didn't use all that little cup. Don't pour it back in here. This is a moisture curing paint. So you don't want to put an unused portion of paint back in the can. Another thing you've got to be very, very careful of, and here's an old can, is getting paint around this edge. You will not get this lid off. You will destroy the lid to get it back off if you get paint down in there. It'll weld this lid to this can. I know it sounds crazy, and you're probably thinking, you're full of shit. No, this stuff is that evil that you will not get it off. Wear rubber gloves, because if you don't wear rubber gloves, you're going to wear silver paint till it wears off of you. So that's another thing. Now, you can take masking tape, and put mas take the lid off, and you can put masking tape in a V like this. Put tape across here and tape across there. Or just tape all the way around the edge. If you're taking it right out of the can, just dipping your brush in. That way you can uh, save the top of your can. Uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll get three or four extra quart cans from Napa. And I'll just pour the unused portion in the Napa can. If I destroyed like this one here, I kind of screwed up and got it all over the lid. My fault. You can buy this stuff on Amazon. If you don't see it on Amazon, don't get in a panic. He's a small company. He's out of New Jersey. He does have a 1-800 number. He has a Facebook page. Um, and he puts the product up regularly. Uh, actually, I did a TikTok video last month, and it went crazy. And he actually called me because he sold out of all the product. And he called me to thank me and uh, gave me his number and everything. So he told me if I need product, call him. Great. So if you do see it out of stock and you want to try this stuff, I should probably be showing you the other can so you can see it. Um, don't panic because um, he will it will be in stock. He's been selling this stuff for 30-some years. Uh, with him and his daughter and his wife. There you go. Give it a shot. Uh, I, that's all I can tell you. Um, I, I can't talk. I can't say enough about this product. I have a very good friend of mine, very, very good friend of mine. He turned me on to the stuff 20-some years ago. He owns a body shop. Um, he builds some really wild stuff. He sandblasted a Jaguar. Uh, I want to say an early 70s Jaguar. He sandblasted the whole car. Painted the whole car with this stuff. To this day, that car is still outside. It is not rusty. Now, it had some rust holes in the body. And he just cut the rust holes out with a, with a whiz wheel. And sandblasted the car. 
and a car still outside to this day. Other than some of the spots of silver turned green from where the car is sitting, the car is still silver. And he did that because, it, you know, he's got a million projects, but he did that because he wanted to save the car and he wasn't ready to, like, really do the car right now. And here we are. I want to say that car has been outside all, close to 30 years. And he sandblasted it, painted it with the silvers, and then with hopes of, ah, eh, down the road I'll get to it. You can do body work over top of this. Now, I know some body guys are going to say, oh, no, you can't, blah, blah, blah. You can. I have done it. He has done it. He's got cars that he's done years ago that he's done body work over top of this. And to this day, not a lick of problem. Some of his stuff sits outside because at the end of the day, if, if, we're, if you got as many cars as me and him do, we ain't got room inside. I fixed a roof. <clears throat> I had a 64 Falcon. It was a vinyl top car. The roof was in really bad shape. The car needed a roof, but the car wasn't worth putting a roof on. You know, you got that car that's like borderline. This car was cool. It was a V8, two-door hardtop, but it wasn't worth putting a roof on. The car had some other, other rust. It was kind of like, it was a beater car. The thing had a fresh motor in it. It was cool as shit, but it just wasn't worth putting a roof on. And it actually had two rust holes in the front corners of the roof. I cut the rust out, and I literally pop-riveted some metal in because there was nothing to weld to. Pop-riveted some metal in, tiger-coated it. Actually, I, let me back it up. Before I, I cut the rust out, I painted the roof with this, two coats of this. Pop-riveted a piece of metal in. And I know pop-rivet is not the correct fix. I get that. But you got to understand, there's some cars that you fix right, and there's some cars you just fix and enjoy them. And move on to the next project. This was that car. Pop rivets some metal in. Tiger haired it from the bottom. Tiger haired it from the top. Did my body work. Primed it. And painted the roof. And the car looked great. In fact, when I sold the car, I told the guy, the roof's been patched. It really needs a roof skin. But I put a couple coats of this on it. And um, I haven't seen the car in years. But uh, the car's still around. Uh, it's passed through a bunch of hands from the last time I, I heard. But, it, it, you know, I drove the car and had fun with it for a couple of years before I got rid of it. And it sat outside. Like I said, it was not a... It, the car was just in between, you know, it wasn't worth restoring, but it wasn't worth junking. It was just that it was a driver. That's that's the word I want to use. I did a body work on top of this, a couple of coats of this, and then painted the roof. And the car still looks... The roof looks great, actually. The roof looks the roof is actually the best looking part on the car. You know, but um it works. So I mean, you you guys might want to give this stuff a, a shout. Um give it a try. Uh, there's other stuff I use, but uh this this is the this is the go-to stuff that I use for anything rusty um that I want to I want the job, the repair to last. This is what I use. Now I'm kind of rambling on. So anyway. I'm going to finish up this video because I got some work I got to do. But I wanted to share that product with you guys and uh, kind of give you guys an update of what's going on with some projects. Um, I will be doing some videos here. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to, I just got these parts, the Uniball kit for the uh, twin I beam. Uh, probably won't get a chance to do them for, for a couple of weeks because I just got too much other stuff going on. Um, but when I do, I will share a video with you guys along with. Um, how I'm going to install them. So holler at your boy. Keep it reals. Catch me on the next one.